analysis. Half a day provides an allegory of one's journey of life and changes that occur within a person while in this world. It reflects how life starts and ends. It is a story that is filled with symbolism that one has to be able to comprehend and interpret. To paint a clear picture, the author uses a lot of figurative languages such that the reader lives the moment. Every part of this story has a hidden meaning and shows the different stages of life. Mafuz introduces his parents, the mother is full of admiration for him and the father provides him with manly advice. One time as a child, as Mafuz goes to school he questions his father why he has to go to school. He thinks school is a punishment but as his father tells him, school is what makes men out of boys. Mafuz also wonders why children have to grow and leave their parents' homes but he later understands it is the way of life. He realizes he has to attend school so he can become a man just like the father and brothers. He wants to make his father proud. As he waves goodbye he gets into the school's gate ready to learn. As the day starts he tells of the fun times he was having and the lessons he has learned. He makes friends and girlfriends. As the day progresses he discovers that life is not always good times but rather other times challenges arise. He has to persevere and endure struggles to be able to do things that his friends cannot do as this will make him grab more opportunities in life. Themes Educational System On the first day, the narrator is not thrilled at all about being indoctrinated into a system that he loathes. As he understands it, his father is enrolling him in the school system as a form of punishment. His father views the education system as a processing facility that turns boys into productive men that contribute to the society by paying their taxes. The father is dedicated to sending his son to school because it will equip him with the tools to survive in the outside world. Briefly, after he is enrolled in the school, the narrator is forced to learn and adapt to a harsh environment that will condition him for adulthood. Fatherhood the narrator's father is keen on providing him with the essential tools required to climb the capitalist ladder. Despite his son's dislike for school, the father is aware of the value that it will have on his son's life. He decides to be a strict parent by forcing his son to go through hardships. The first friend the narrator makes is a boy whose father died. As he watches the narrator complain about his father's decisions, he cannot help but marvel at the possibility of having his father by him, once more. Everyday Life The stories explore the life of the narrator as he comes of age. Through troublesome experiences, he learns to value and respect life. The narrator's father is hell-bent on securing a future for his son. He wants him to have a life without regret or disappointment. The ups and downs of the characters are documented in vivid nature as they navigate the urbanization boom during the narrator's lifetime. Character list The narrator, half a day One is tempted to label the narrator of this story as something like young boy or student, but that misses the entire point of the narrative. The title refers to the allegorical structure of the story in which an entire life can be lived in half a day. The narrator does start his first day of school as a nervous young boy, but by the time school ends and he prepare to head back home, is an old man referred to as Grandpa. The Happy Man The titular character of this ironically amusing little slice of philosophical satire awakes up one day suddenly happier than he has ever been. As is the case with many people, the arrival of previously unknown emotional contentment becomes paradoxically, a thing of such worry and concern that he cannot actually enjoy the experience. He is finally diagnosed and treated by a doctor who informs him the condition is widespread. The Mummy, The Mummy's Awakening Would you really want a world to exist without an Egyptian writer of Mahfouz is standing to have written a mummy story? Be forewarned. This isn't the mummy of universal horror movies, which is kind of interesting, considering it was written in 1939. Also interesting is that this mummy, no slow-moving love-obsessed relic of another time, is invested with a strangely Moses-like quality. He has come to liberate his people and chew gum, and he's all out of gum. Sinew, the return of sinew. 
Another figure from Egypt's ancient history returns from the past in this story that is actually a reinterpretation of one a mythic parable written nearly 2,000 years before the appearance of Christ. Sinuhe's story actually kind of mirrors that of another biblical figure, however. Both Sinu and Joes are far semi-epic tales of men who flee from Egypt, only to return. Sinuhe's story, however, is about fleeing in poverty, growing rich, and come back to help out the pharaoh and die very well. The story really treads a thin line between being merely a creative translation and a genuinely original work heavily indebted to existing material. The Tea Drinker, A Cup of Tea Many of the author's characters are unnamed, and even if they do have a name, they may be thinly described. This is not to be taken a criticism. The best characters in the short fiction of this writer are allegorical figures. It is generally accepted that the man is intended to symbolise Egypt as it begins to reawaken from its 20th century slumber to reclaim its independence and autonomy after being yet another national to suffer under the oppressive yoke of British colonialism. Summary Half a Day is a short story written by the Nobel Prize winner Nguyen Mahfouz. He wrote this story in the posterior part of his vocation when he was endlessly moving from severe authenticity towards an increasingly trial sort of fiction. The short story begins with the storyteller who is enchanted with his new garments going to his first day of school, as he runs along close to his father. All things considered, in spite of the energy, the boy feels some sort of changes which make him apprehensive. Once in a while, he goes to look his mother in the window of their home, quietly speaking to her for assist. He dislikes going to class. When he resentfully inquires his father for what good reason he is being rebuffed by being sent to school, his father chuckles that school is not at all a discipline, however rather school is a processing factory that makes helpful men out of young men. He has pushed his child through the school door in spite of the boy's aversion and dread, his father vows to be there when the boy leaves the school. The boy takes a gander at different school children. He does not know anybody there. One of the boys questions him who carried him to school. When the storyteller replies it was his father, the other boy responds that his own father is passed away. On the first day of the school, a decent appearing lady sorts the children into positions and examples, revealing to them the school are their new home, where there is everything that is charming and useful to intelligence and religion. The storyteller acknowledges her words. Before long, he warms up to certain young boys and becomes hopelessly enamored with certain young girls. The school trains the students in geology, language, religion, music, and physical action. The delineation of what they are realizing is meager and intended to not be considered actually yet as an analogy for what an individual would experience while transitioning. Simultaneously, life there is not constantly smooth. The storyteller faces surprising cataclysmic events, contentions with peers that turn vicious, and the once-in-the-past merciful lady who arranged the children currently regularly rebuffs and harms them. The boys understand that they cannot go home again. Before long, the storyteller and his friends are never again permitted to adjust their perspectives on their convictions. At long last, the chime rings to declare the end of the workday, and the school children race to the entryways to leave the school. The storyteller bids farewell to his companions and sentimental interests, however his father is not waiting for him as he had guaranteed. In the wake of sticking around for quite a while, the storyteller chooses to walk home without anyone else. When he strolls, he runs into a moderately aged man whom he grasps well. He inquires after the man. The man replies that he is not doing such well. In the street that he used to roam leisurely is out of nowhere, he is presently frightened by the progressions. Rather than a road fixed with gardens, there are presently vehicles, high structures, swarms of humankind, upsetting commotions and slopes of decline which are all proof of the progressions that modernization and urbanization have made during the storyteller's day at school or rather, his whole lifetime. Now he can see the street is out of nowhere. 
it is loaded up with uproarious and impervious traffic like taxis, a circus march, and a fire motor with its alarm booming, and trucks loaded up with fighters. As the storyteller considers how the entirety of this could have happened into equal parts a day, between early morning and dusk, he simply needs to be home with his father. Nevertheless, he cannot go across the road in the upheaval. Subsequent to standing quite a while, the storyteller is helped across by a little boy who works at the ironing shop on the corner of the street. When the boy holds out his hand and addresses him as grandpa, and then the storyteller understands that he has now become old, he realized that a half day at school was his entire life which passed quickly.